Hi everybody, today we're going to be going over the new compliance form and the new requirements uh, just to talk about some of the similarities and differences between the old requirements and the new. Um, and my name is Kim Hall and I'm the membership services representative for individuals so I would be the person who would be turning in the form to and also if you have any questions I'm always happy to talk with you guys. Um, so we'll start from the top of the form and work down to the bottom. So the first difference you'll see of course is right at the top we have a new box where you'll put your name and your PATH International member ID number here. Um, and then we go down to the very first part in bold where it says to maintain compliance as a PATH International certified professional when submitting your annual membership dues you must also submit documentation of a minimum of 20 continuing education hours obtained during the previous 12 months to include at least six hours of disability education and two hours relevant to each certification that you hold. So going back up to this very first bolded um, sentence up here, uh, so what we're saying when submitting your annual membership dues, what we mean is when you guys are ready to submit your compliance form um, or ready to pay, it all needs to be turned in at the same time. For those who do pay online, we do give you a two week grace period to get your form in if you do decide to mail it. Um, online we do have a fillable form which I'm using today as the example. So you're welcome to pay online um, or pay over the phone and then submit your compliance form via email, fax, or mail, however is most convenient for you. Um, so like I said we do want you to submit it all at the same time um, and then going down to the next line here a minimum of 20 continuing education hours within those 20 hours at least six hours should be of disability education now this is new um, compared to what we used to do so when we say disability education what we mean is we want cognitive uh, physical emotional behavioral veterans topics, things like PTSD, traumatic brain injury, even if you guys are taking an American Sign Language course to, uh, to help you with your participants who may be nonverbal, that's perfect. Um, any of that will work just fine. Um, and moving down to the two hours of relevant to each certification held, I know most of you guys that we have are registered writing instructors. So for you guys, what we're looking for is at least two hours of writing lessons that you have taken with a maximum of six hours. Previously, we used to accept a maximum of 10 hours, but it's been reduced to six. And we do know a lot of you guys, um, for one reason or another, are not taking riding lessons or riding horses or other equines. So we do have some other options for that requirement. One is you can do mounted or unmounted coaching which I'll explain in just a moment or you may attend a clinic with an emphasis on instruction or teaching techniques so that would be a clinic that focuses on helping you learn different techniques for your mental toolkit in order to teach your participants now going back to what we mean by coaching so when we say coaching that's going to be different than mentoring when we say coaching what we mean is you would be coached or be coached by another PATH International instructor who's currently in good standing. So that would mean observing one of their lessons and providing positive and constructive feedback on their writing and or instruction techniques. Um, for driving instructors, of course, um, it'll be very similar as it was before. You will want to get two hours of driving lessons or coaching or attend a clinic with an emphasis on your instruction or tech, uh, teaching techniques. So very similar to the way it was before, um, receiving driving lessons or coaching. Um, now the difference here is what we're saying is all of this has to be within the 20 hours. I know for a lot of folks who have had multiple certifications in the past, you're turning well over 20 hours in. Well that's one big change that we've made is all of this is within 20 hours. So if you get six hours of disability and you have multiple certifications, um, if, even if you have all of these certifications, you'll be turning in two, four, six, eight hours uh, plus six hours of disability so you would fill in the rest to equal 20 hours. So for interactive vaulting instructors you'd want to receive two hours of vaulting lessons 
or mounted or unmounted coaching and going back to that definition is observing a path or national instructor and providing them with positive and constructive feedback on their lessons um, or of course you also have the option of a clinic, attending a clinic that helps you on your personal instruction techniques uh, for equine specialists in mental health and learning you can receive two hours of unmounted lessons or groundwork skills or horse behavior or attend a clinic with instruction or teaching techniques so that's a little bit different than it used to be for you mental health and learning folks the ESMHL where we were asking for specifically mental health and learning and now we're focusing a little bit more on that equine specialist piece of that and a lot of times for you guys your mental health hours may be included within your disability education okay so moving on to the um, Continuing education activities submitted to fulfill the minimum of 20 hours should involve active participation or reflect the pursuit of professional development. Now, a lot of those activities are going to be formally organized educational events, individual professional activities, professional conferences and meetings. For example, if you go to our professional conferences, our regional conferences, or our national conference, or perhaps you may attend something from the um, CHA or Autism Society, any of that would be perfect. Um, here's something new that we've added that we didn't have before. Academic or outcomes-based EAAT research. So if you are doing an independent research project, you may turn in the work and the research that you've put into that project as your CEUs. Uh, another thing that we're accepting we didn't accept before is going to be educational webinars and videos. So that's now just not limited to what we have available through our website. You're welcome to branch out to other websites and other equine professionals or professional associations. For example, with the videos, if you say had a Pat Pirelli video series, we used to not accept that, but now we do. So you're welcome to watch those videos and submit that for your CEUs. Um, another thing you can do is, of course, receiving lessons or evaluation for skill mastery. Um, so that's going to be included uh, with these lessons up here. Especially for you riding instructors, we do have a cap on that is four hours. But with you riding instructors, what you want to do is add that to your two hours required. So you can have a total of six hours of riding lessons. Um, another thing that everybody can include is the providing or receiving coaching as defined by the guidelines, which is exactly what I said earlier, where we define coaching as observing another PATH International instructor with less experience than you and providing them with positive and constructive feedback on their lesson and writing skills. And another option you have is volunteering for a PATH International, Special Olympics or Paralympics or any special show at your PATH International Center. Uh, we do have a cap on those hours as well. Volunteering for PATH International for a full year um, would be if you were on a subcommittee, committee, task force, work group, anything like that, you get two hours. Um, for more details, you can visit the website. Um, just follow this link that's on the compliance form and it will explain to you in detail uh, what we accept and what we don't accept. Now going down to the next session talks about a little bit about what we do not accept. Um, of course this has always been on the compliance form is something we don't accept. Uh, CPR and first aid training um, and another big change regarding CPR and first aid is you are no longer required to send in proof along with your renewal materials each year. We want to make sure of course that you guys are still keeping that current but you'll keep it for your own personal records or your center's records. We'll only ask you for that if for some reason we are auditing you and we'll ask you for proof of all of your CEUs and um, evidence that you have current first aid and CPR um, or if you are reinstating we will ask you to turn copies of that in. Another thing we're now no longer accepting is recreational riding. So that would be pleasure riding, anything like that. Um, exercise classes, yoga classes, massage, uh, anything like that we're no longer accepting um, and also things that are included in your day-to-day -day job activities uh, we want you guys to be doing extra um, extra activities outside of your job that helps you stay informed and up-to-date on uh, the current topics in EAAT 
Um, also, observing or providing therapeutic sessions or writing lessons. Of course, you guys, oh, we want to make sure, again, that you're doing stuff outside of your certification to gain more knowledge. Um, and this is a big hot topic right here. General Horse Expo or Fair Attendance. <laughs> One of the things we're not accepting is writing down a blanket statement that you attended Equine Affair or any other Horse Expo or Fair. What we want you guys to do is write down the sessions. So each person that you attended, for example, if you went to Equine Affair and saw Chris Cox, you'll want to write that down independently uh, and separately from each other uh, session that you attended. That is perfectly acceptable. So you can, of course, still attend those horse expos and fairs, but just write each session out um, individually. Now going down to the bottom of the form, it's looking a little bit different. Um, there's no longer a space, of course, for your first aid and CPR. Just want to make sure you check the box that say it's current um, and that you have all 20 hours. Um, and you'll have your certifications listed here and your number there. And everything can be put in here like it was before. Your event goes on this side, a location, institution, a coach, or supervisor. Any um, particular person that goes here, uh, the date that you completed, um, and what type of of continuing education is it? Does it go towards general hours, which would be CE, or does it go towards your disability education, which would be DE? And then the total number of hours here. And of course, um, so that we know that you, of course, agree to adhere to the code of ethics, we always want to make sure that you sign and date the bottom of the form. So that's going through the new compliance form and the main differences. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can always email me um, or feel free to call the office. All of my contact information is down at the bottom of the form now, so you'll know where to submit it. Our address is in the middle, fax number and phone number on the right side. Thank you so much for watching.